for RCR TV, I'm Sean Kinney, and I'm pleased to be joined today by Simon Osborne, who is the CTO for Service Orchestration at CompTEL. Simon, thanks so much for taking some time to speak with us. No, no problem. It's always a pleasure, right? So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Well, you know, I've really uh, enjoyed getting to talk with some of your colleagues about the Nexterday North event that's coming up in November in Helsinki. Uh, you know, it sounds like a really exciting, forward-looking event. I was curious, what are you looking forward to the most about the show? Um, I think uh, normally with with events, and particularly with vendor events, it's a very um, it's a very inward-looking show, right? You, you get you get a lot of context from the vendor, you get a lot of context in terms of products and and roadmap. But I think what we've been able to do now is take some really stimulating debate from the industry as a whole. Um, so, frankly, rather than um, myself just preaching and just telling people what I think, I'm, I'm looking forward to learning something myself, uh, both from our customers, um, from people who are practically not our customers, who just have an opinion uh, in the industry which is, which is valid. And, uh, and right now, I, we're in a really fertile time in the industry. There's, there's no right or wrong answers. This is about uh, a journey together. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's quite an innovative way for us to be doing this. Um, I'm, uh, I'm excited to see how it pan out. Yeah, you know, um, I, I know one of the major topics that's going to be discussed at Next Day North is uh, SDN NFV, obviously a, a huge trend in the service provider industry right now. Uh, through this virtualization and automation, service providers can uh, – increase time to market, increase efficiency, and at the same time drive down their operational expenses and provide a better end user experience. So really a powerful technology. But I know that that adoption of NFV SDN kind of has implications for the business model of a service provider. I was hoping you could uh, explain that a little bit more. Yes, yeah, so, I mean, I'd, I'm, I'm old enough to have been doing this for a while now, right? So the promise of new levels of agility, lower costs, it's the holy grail that the telco organizations have been looking for for, for a long, long time. Uh, I think what's different now is with the advent of, of IP and then the moving towards this, this, uh, this exciting technology of the software-based networking, it makes it more viable, right? So I think when we, we see the idea of agility, we see the idea of operational change and, and cost control, perhaps in the past it was – it was still a very heterogeneous environment, right? You still had layering and layering on top of, of sort of compromise, compromise. So I think if you look at STNNV, you have the ability to really embrace some of the, the IT levels of agility. And I think in the past, there was always um, an agility paradigm that was still based on the idea that it was a box with flashing lights and it took months and years to trial and you put it in a lab and you tested it in an environment. I think with the IT guys, you, you're now starting to see the stand-up time for services and applications is, is unheard of. Um, so frankly, even if the, the telco guys can, can take a, a half of that, a quarter of that agility, it will be a, a massive transformation change. You then slap straight into, are they ready for it? Right? Are, they, are, they, are they able to take this new agility, this, this new paradigm? And, and actually, is it, is it not comfortable to, to consider SDNFE as just a, uh, a new flavor of ice cream? Right? I mean, it's been, it's been done a hundred times before. Let's, let's just... And, and the past and, and industry in general is littered with, with analogies where um, the, the, the first electrical motors in factories were deployed to replace a steam engine. They were still centralized. They were still built around the distribution of power as opposed to the efficiency of the factory. And uh, I think with, with uh, SDNFV, the telcos really needed to embrace what's possible how would they like to organize their businesses? How would they use this as a technology to um, aid that transformation, that vision? And, and then look at it at a more holistic view rather than this is just a new technology in the network like we've had another technology in the network for the last 30 years. Um, for me, that's, that's exciting, right? I mean, we, we see a transformation um, in, in the, the front office and the back office. And... Um, bringing those two together, maybe. Maybe this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Maybe this is a once-in-a-generational time to, to think differently and, and, and understand that the flows coming in and out of the business, that 
that start with, with the source, which is the customer, um, the direction of those flows, the direction of that business, the, the model is, is changing. Um, and I, I see healthy debates. I see, um, I see people expressing fear and concern. I see people expressing skepticism. Um, and it will see, it'll be interesting to see how it pans out. There's, there's a lot for people to gain and there's a lot for people to lose. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes. And I'd like to think that Comtel are, are playing a part in, in, uh, in leading that debate, particularly with our, with our thinking around Operation Next today, understanding that the, the customer's at the heart of all these decisions, the business processes should be around um, the, the individuals rather than uh, just APIs and, and passing data around. Yeah, you know, you mentioned the, uh, the customer there, and, and one really crucial customer segment right now is Generation Cloud. And, uh, you know, these are people that expect the newest service immediately uh, and it, for it to work perfectly. You know, these are data-hungry consumers. And uh, I was hoping you could help us understand how NFV and SDN solutions can really help service providers reach that customer segment, really communicate to Generation Cloud and support what they need in a, in a network experience? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I see it for myself, right? My, my, my parents, they, they thought themselves lucky to have a phone at the bottom of the stairs, right? That was wired in and it would take months to get provisioned and set up and, and job good, right? Um, I see my life now, I look around me, I've got mobile devices, I've got connectivity everywhere, and then I look at my children, um, seven and three year olds, and they consider every screen a touch screen. Right? I mean, the number of times they go to a screen and press the button for it to do something and, and actually feel somewhat sort of surprised that it, it doesn't work the way it should. Um, I think we're going to see that change in the way that we consume services, right? I think um, not so long ago, the idea of convergence was a single bill. Right? I think the idea now of convergence is, is my portfolio of my services and how together they, they work together. And a very simple example of that is um, I, I'm not going to wait a week, five days, 10 days, whatever it is for a service to be turned on. Um, I expect it now and and actually fulfillment you look at provisioning you look at the end-to-end -end processes that flow through a telco um there's no technical reason why it can't be that fast it's really organizational boundaries uh architectures that are deemed the um uh, the right way to do things that create a, a flow that that brings latency and and, and time in so I, I think very realistically we'll see uh, fulfillment becoming first usage event. Why is NFV relevant to that? Um, I think what it does is, if you think of it at a very abstract level, um, uh, NFV just creates the opportunity to put software insertion points into the network. Right? And those software insertion points can be used to uh, help police uh, backhaul, bandwidth, optimization, to try and control costs in terms of uh, connectivity. They could be there for enriched content delivery. They could be there for personalization of services. But it effectively becomes a distributed processing environment. Um, and that's only going to help with lowering the latency, improving the expectations, improving the, the customer experience. So I think it gives the telcos um, an opportunity to, it's a bit corny, right, but almost create an over-the-top environment that they can start to influence and control rather than just surrendering that experience all the way through to the ecosystems on the phones and, and the home kits, right? Um, so I, I think they have a chance, whether they're able to, to take it, whether they're able to, to, to figure out what their real focus is and how they can create value. Maybe the jury's out, right? Um, but I think they have an opportunity with, with NFE to, to change the way they do business. I'm always asked, okay, so what are all these services, right? We talk about service agility, so how, where are they? I think that they're all over the place. And, and they're, they're things today that really people haven't monetized in a way that's mass market. I mean, that father of young families, right? Parental control, right? I mean, being able to, it's still a niche thing. It's still a bit kooky kooky for me. So the idea that you can get control over that, um, there's a number of applications. The business side, I mean, clearly enterprise 
um, business services. The, I mean, we talk about cloud generation, but we still don't have flow through uh, in many enterprise business segments. So, so the idea that you can roll out uh, firewall, uh, sort of NAT services, security services, um, open collaboration, communication ability in, in, in minutes rather than putting boxes in the network, um, that, that would be exciting. And that, that would change the experience as well. Yes. Yeah, so when we when we think about service providers moving towards NFV and SDN and, and service orchestration, uh, it seems like as 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 the telco networks and, and service needs get more and more complex, that this is going to quickly shift from being something that would be nice to have to being something that's sort of imperative to have just to support everything that's going on with your network. How do you see adoption of these? virtualization and software-defined networking solutions uh, taking shape over the next few years? Uh, that's the big question, right? Um, I think if you, if you look at practically every service provider on the planet, um, it's an interest level for them now, right? I think even, even for traditional business, they're now trying to verify whether they're future-proofed um, in terms of this mega trend, whether, whether they understand it or not. Um, the more advanced telcos, um, they, they see the, the, the business case in terms of simplification of their ops networks, in terms of cost models, consolidation, and commoditization of, of the hardware, they see it as a bit of a no-brainer. But at the end of the day, the, the, the business case is still king, right? And, and behind the business case is the use case. And I'm, I'm seeing very um, separate threads in terms of those use cases. You've got the virtualization of, of the packet core, essentially, um, which, yes, has advantages. I mean, it's it's going to make things a little bit easier, but it's not going to change the world. I think the, the consumption of that packet core is pretty much the same as it is now. It, it's replacing the centralized steam engine with a with an electrical engine. It's the same in our engine. If you, if you look at use cases around, um, around enterprise um, business services, that's where you have the opportunity to, to change the way you do business. That's the way you have the chance you have to, to change. So I'm seeing some service providers who, who are saying, well, you know what, let's just focus on virtualizing some of the boxes that I don't, they're just big and they're old and I just want to sort of make some, some better process around it. And then you get the other ones who say, look, the way we do business today is broken. Uh, this is an opportunity to, to really change. Um, and, and that, it, Depending upon who the service provider is, that then drives their equation. That then drives how they engage. That then drives. So there's lots of guys doing parks. There's lots of guys doing trials. Um, I'd be surprised if there was many that were in mass market or even enterprise market style rollout. There are some, um, and there are some advanced telcos who did it before even NFE existed. Right? They just they figured it made sense to virtualize the CPE. Why, why would it not make sense? Um, so I, I think um, activity has increased from a Comtel perspective. My day and my week and my team are completely consumed by interest from every telco across the planet in this space. I mean, we're doing proof of concepts, demonstrations, workshops every week. Um, are people spending money and buying stuff? I don't know. They're, they're certainly issuing RFXs. They're certainly issuing um, um, private trade show type analogies where they get the input from, from their mall. And I think there is a maturing of a point of view. Um, the standards are struggling to keep up with the progress the telcos are making through their own experiences. Um, so let's, let's assume, like many people say 2016, right? You start to see that the things dropping in. Um, I think it will happen. I think it will happen, and it will happen in the next two, three years. It will become to a point where people won't even remember the, the old days, right? The phone at the bottom of the steps. We, Simon, uh, another thing I wanted to hear from you about is this um, transactional versus conversational relationship with, uh, with customers. And, and to frame that question a little better, uh, telcos and service providers have arguably you know, more customer data than any other industry. And it's all about finding a way to use that data in an insightful way to drive revenue. 
but I was hoping you could explain to us a little bit about how service providers can use that data to really change the uh, consumer experience management process and uh, and just uh, tell us a little bit about how that data access can help support that shift from a transactional to a conversational relationship. Yeah, I think, I mean, you see it on, on many levels. I mean, I think um, the industry as a whole has been in a, a paradigm of um, supply and push, right? So the whole, the whole concept is you, you package something up and then you, you try and you try and sell it, right? And uh, and hopefully people are interested, and people say, you know what, that that sort of fits what I want, so I'll I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll get that. Um, and there's a lot of stickiness, right? So they create stickiness through um, the, the costing models, through the um, convergence of services, triple play, quad play, whatever, right? That's how they create the stickiness. But very rarely, and, and you see this more in the, the advanced um, app generation, cloud generation, app store model, you see a situation where it's more demand and pull, right? where the, the, it, it turns on its head a little bit, there's a, there's a little bit of a shift. And, and to do the demand and pull, um, you're late binding any, everything, right? You, you, you're making decisions on the fly about who is this customer? Where are they? What, what's eligible? What's available? What's the, what's the deal I need? So you start to see this um, preeminence of, of uh, CPQ type technology, where micropayments, where people are, are making very sort of bespoke choices as to, as to what they want rather than being told what they can buy. And that idea starts to ripple through every single part of their interaction with the telco. They, they expect to have a degree of flexibility um, and they expect to have a dialogue that, that knows who they are. Right? And, and, and also, you could, you could, I, mean, I saw a fascinating uh, demonstration recently um, at an event where they were monitoring every touch point from a consumer such that there was a commonality, such that if you ever then phoned up or if you had it, immediately knew what you'd been doing, why you were doing, and things like that. It's, it's more closed loop. And if I look at architectures of the past, they tended to automate people in a process rather than automating processes for people. And um, they tended to be north, south, south, north. And I think the architecture of the futures are more are more in out. So, as an example, in the enterprise domain, um, uh, there's huge degrees of fallout still in in selling things that can't be delivered. Right? I mean, just simple things, right? You, you create a, a product offering, you try and sell it to an enterprise customer for a multi-site service with some level of connectivity, security, mobility, problems, whatever. And then you discover, sorry, you can't do that. Or, sorry, it's going to take another six months because we haven't got the bandwidth. Um, and, and that becomes, in the app store model, unacceptable, right? I mean, it just, it just becomes uh, unacceptable. So I think this, this shift, uh, uh, and I, I saw a fast, I was with uh, somebody last week, a fascinating organization, and uh, they analyzed their architectures and they found, as you said, there's lots of customer data. Um, but most of the processing time of their collective of all systems was consumed in just passing that data around, right? not actually doing anything with it. And, and what they found was frustrating was the self-care processes, the initial order touch points, those were where the experiences were won and lost. Right? Those are where you, you kept the customer or you lost the customer. And uh, the plumbing inside should be optimized for that experience, not optimized for organizational boundaries, not optimized for architectures that have been designed for, for many, many years. Um, but it's challenging, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's saying it's the way we've done it doesn't work. Um, and that's brave, and that's why, particularly around SDNFE, um, there is a, a reluctance or certainly a, a fear I guess amongst a lot of uh, a lot of the telcos to to embrace that change, um, and, and maybe the younger, more agile telcos who are able to to say, look, this just makes sense because that's my own personal experience of how things should work. Um, maybe those are the guys who who break, who break the mold, right? Um, so that's why it's exciting. 
Yeah, I, I think you really hit on it there when you talked about a, a personalization, customization. So, you know, the, from my perspective, if you take all these solutions as a whole, NFV, SDN, orchestration, and uh, analytics processing, you can really drive value to your organization by putting the right offer in front of the right consumer at the exact right time. One general example of that would be, you know, you go over your data cap and then you're immediately presented with an offer to upgrade to the next service tier. So it's just a, a seamless sort of no touch process, <clears throat> money for the operator and creates value for the customer. And just that I, I really am struck by the, the revenue potential here, but I guess that's the, the gamble, right? You've got to invest in these systems and phase out your legacy to realize that return on investment, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think the telco industry can, um, I mean, it's not even about SDNV, it's not even about, it's just about understanding that um, there's an opportunity there that they're leaving money on the table. And, and the money they're leaving um, is that transitory service, right? It's that, it's that service that you choose to buy for a minute or a day or, or an hour or a week or whatever it is. Um, and in many cases, people would do that if it was easy, right? And, and telco spend huge, vast sums of money and resources in making sure we don't leave, right? And making sure that we're so sticky in our contracts and our... Um, uh, processes that it's just life's too short to, to change. Um, but they miss the trick in terms of selling something to me for a minute, right? Um, because in theory, if you've got a platform that is already costed, is already in place, that is already agile, that can stand up these new services without falling apart, um, that, that service for a minute is money from heaven. Right? It's free, right? And if you look at the analogy to low-cost airlines, right? What do they do? They, they took all the um, variable cost out of their business by commoditizing around single hardware with the same plane, right? So what did they get? They got uh, cheaper servicing costs because they only have to train their guys on one plane. Uh, they got cheaper costs for buying seats and, and fabric because there's only one type of plane, there's only one type of seat. Um, so they take all that, that variable cost out so they get a really close understanding of, of their cost and margin. Everything else is gravy. The, the fact that you buy a bag of crisps or a drink or you choose which seat or you pay extra to put your bag on the plane, there's not a single cost to them in, in selling you that service, right? It's baked into the model. And, uh, and telcos don't seem to get that. I'm, I'm constantly surprised that people don't try and sell me something for a very short period of time. I travel a lot, turn my phone on every time I get off a plane, and nobody tries to sell me anything, ever. <laughs> like you said, that's just money that they're leaving on the table. So, uh, yeah. you know, and, and the solutions to fix that are out there. It's just about making that business decision. So. Yeah. Uh, it's the holistic view of the process. It's trying to create a homogeneous organization, not a homogeneous network, not a homogeneous organization that is centered around what is the business. And uh, I don't think the telcos are there, right? I think they're struggling with, uh, it's a bag of razor blades and they're struggling to get to that, to that point. Um, and, and one of the things that is, valid around virtualization of the network is you, you may see a new entrance of telco, a new type of, I mean, we've had uh, virtual mobile operators for a while, right? Um, but virtual fixed line operators, that, that is possible, right? And it may be it's those guys who start to see that for them, their business was always consuming and reselling other people's services. And they tried to build a customer experience around the fact that it was the intimacy to their customers that was going to survive and make them successful. Um, and running the network cards for somebody else's problem, right? Um, maybe this, this, this technology gives them a, a chance to, to bring a new model into, into that, that space. Well, Simon, I really appreciate you sharing CompTEL's insight into the NFV SDN space. It really is exciting and it's moving so quickly. And we look forward to hearing more about it November 9th and 10th at uh, Nexter Day North in Helsinki.
Yeah, no, we've got some good stuff to show. Um, we've got uh, a couple of demonstrations and we can walk through the whole vision that we have, uh, service agility, uh, the onboarding process, and, and really trying to create a, a different way of doing business. Um, hopefully it will prick some interest and we'll have some healthy debates. <laughs>